Shelby Talcott and Jorge Ventura are joining me today. They were just on the ground in Minneapolis before and after the verdict for former officer Derek Chauvin. Shelby, I want to start with you. I want to play some video that you captured of the crowd leading up to the verdict being announced. Let me grab that for us. So this was shortly before the verdict was announced. We had heard that it was going to be announced between a certain time and people had started gathering. This was actually just at the very start of um, when people were starting to gather. So that whole park area got really big. It was just outside the courthouse. Everyone was giving speeches, talking to each other. Um, basically really anxious to hear what this jury had decided. And we also had some footage when the announcement was actually made, when he was found guilty on all three charges of second degree manslaughter, second degree murder, and third degree murder. Shelby, you captured these two videos that I want to play for us now, and can you just walk through sort of what the feeling was like on the ground there and what people were saying? It was jubilant, I would say. Everyone was incredibly excited. There were cheers. I feel like uh, there were tears as you're seeing people were literally crying hugging each other uh, I feel like a lot of these people really wanted this verdict but didn't necessarily think that they would get it and so when the jury they, they started cheering just when it was announced that the first charge was guilty and so when they heard that all charges were guilty it was it, you know you could sort of feel the relief of these protesters uh, on the ground. Jorge, was your experience similar to what Shelby was just describing? Can you sort of walk us through what you were seeing and what the feeling was on your end? Yeah, the crowd was very anxious before the verdict and as soon as it was announced, just kind of like Shelby said, the you know the people were celebrating, lots of uh, tears, people were praying, hugging, and I think the, the general mood was just a huge sigh of relief. Uh, when I was speaking to some of the protesters and doing interviews, they said that they they didn't expect this outcome at all and that they were glad that the, the jury uh, did decide that final verdict. But it was just a bunch of celebrations. People were really in a good mood. People were cooking food and taking pictures of each other. Um, it wasn't what we actually expected. And I think also what the city of Minneapolis expected uh, due to the uh, law enforcement that they brought into the city. They were preparing for potential civil unrest, um, but we didn't see it at all while we were on the ground. So this was actually later in the night on the same day that the verdict was announced. This was actually at George Floyd Square. Uh, it's it's basically where George Floyd died and it's kind of turned into an autonomous zone. It's been like that for nearly a year. There are a few hundred uh, people out there celebrating, uh, popping fireworks, a lot of hugs. And around midnight, I would say the, the, the crowd actually left the scene it was a very quiet night there was actually a speaker who who said hey tonight we're going to celebrate and be happy but we want everyone to go home safe so they lasted uh, about midnight but yeah those were the scenes at george floyd square people of all ages uh, were there and from all over the country uh, were there celebrating now jorge the next day on wednesday you went to george floyd square and you talked to some business owners in that area can you tell us a little bit about what they were saying what they were thinking following the verdict and sort of what they hope will happen moving forward so to the business owners that I did speak to inside George Floyd Square, they were telling me that they were they had a huge sign of relief that they could now just move on uh, from this process. For them, they said, hey, we're just small business owners. We just want to make money. We had no idea that we would be tied into this huge national story. And for them, they, they were it was a sigh of relief for them to just to move on. But the majority of the business owners said that they do support uh, that section there to be turned into a memorial site for George Floyd, but they don't support the barricades. As, as I said before, every single intersection into George Floyd Square is barricaded off. And the business owners tell me that even though they're, they're happy that the verdict has been announced and they can move on and that Chauvin was found guilty, but that they they're still have not been satisfied with the city because the city hasn't helped them move the barricades. They say that they are losing money and that there are residents in Minneapolis who don't come inside George Floyd Square because no police are allowed in there and they don't feel safe. So the bit, small businesses inside George Floyd Square are really impacted by this because they're essentially cut off from the rest of, of the community, essentially. So I just want to talk a little bit more about these 24 demands that are written uh, right inside of George Floyd Square. Um, can you talk a little bit more, um, either one of you, uh, if you can read that, sort of walk us through these demands, at least some of them. Um, and sort of, you know, what the feeling was the day after. Yeah, so these are the uh, the demands that the protesters at George Floyd Square agreed to. And they say that 
they uh, essentially they're going to occupy that zone at George Floyd Square until the 24th demands are met. So it is unclear how long uh, this could last. And uh, when I was speaking to one of the organizers, they said, hey, we'll, we'll hold this down to as long as we need to. Uh, some of the demands have, uh, I would say the majority of the demands have not been met. Only about a few uh, have been met so far. But according to them, these are the 24 demands that they need to be met uh, in order for them to give that space back to the city. And as of now, it's, it's still very unclear. I spoke to one business owner who said that the city has been talking about, uh, uh, you know, getting a set date to remove those barricades, but that they are very worried about the reaction from those inside George Floyd Square. So right now it's very unclear if the city's going to work with the community to meet these demands. As of now, it doesn't really seem like it because they haven't really uh, made an effort to really meet with any of the organizers and discuss really the, the removal of these barricades that you see uh, blocking the rest of the community from en en entering uh, George Floyd Square. And these blockades have been up since pretty soon after George Floyd's death. So it's been like this for, you know, since 2020, um, which is, is crazy to think about. Most of the no cop zones that we've gone to in other cities have been dismantled by the city or by the police department uh, within a few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned, you know, it's been almost a year since George Floyd was killed back on Memorial Day of 2020. You guys have both covered these riots, these protests throughout the country, Portland, uh, Seattle, obviously right there in Minneapolis. What do you think happens now? Do you think, you know, the, the temperature will sort of cool a little bit or do you think we're going to keep seeing these protests and these riots that we saw over the last year? I think the temperature will cool a little bit and we've seen that happen. Um, obviously last year it was just city after city after city and it wasn't just protesting, it was it was violent, it, it got into rioting in a lot of places and we've sort of seen that lesson I think as time has gone on. I do think that there will continue to be outbursts of protests, um, I'm just not sure whether it will get to the level that it did last year that we saw. Yeah, I definitely think that as of right now, the temperature has cooled down. Um, but, you know, things could change, you know, so quickly in this in this country, I think after we, we learned last year, um, you know, as of right now, you never know when a new video could, could, could come up to on the internet where it's a, you know, a police shooting and you don't know how the community reacts. Uh, you know, every city is, is, has a different dynamic. But as of right now, I would say the temperatures have cooled. I'm not really sure if we'll see the mass civil unrest that we saw uh, last summer and, you know, multiple cities. So as of right now, I do think the temperature has cooled down and I guess we'll just really have to see how long it, it lasts and um, also how policing changes. I know it was announced that the, the Department of Justice is opening an investigation on the police department of Minneapolis. So we'll have to see how that how those results go as well, I believe.